gunfish signature to make sure the fish can read um, what type of bait it is. Um, when the fish comes up and it's about to hit the bait, it's got to read that it's a gunfish. Um, like I, I like pizza, and Johnny over here might like a cheeseburger. So like he'll come up and he'll read that that says gunfish, and he might turn away, you know. Um, but if he really likes gunfishes, he's gonna whack the crap out of. I'm What's going on people? Noah from Kicking Their Bass TV here with another video and this is Tackle Tuesday number six. You guys are requesting top water. Um, you guys are going crazy. You're wanting top water. You kept on commenting top water. I just couldn't get to it last week. Oh, I did top water frogs last week. But this week we're going to go over all the top waters. So um, I'm going to go from spooks to gunfishes to poppers to chug bugs. All the styles. I'm going to talk about when to throw the right colors, um, where to throw that style of bait, um, rod and reel setup, the line, everything I use. Um, also, a little quick thing. On Instagram, when you guys are sending me messages and stuff, when you send me DMs, um, I get an average of around probably 50 a day. And then on YouTube, I get probably 150 comments a day. I try to get back to all you guys. So on Instagram you have to go back and you have to you you hit the pending request and you have to hit the little check buttons so I went through and I hit all the check buttons I believe I had like 70 something requests because I didn't check it in like a day or something so I went and checked them all and then I hit the back button and I tried to scroll down and there was only like 10 DMs like 10 new ones so I guess it I guess it only goes by tens like it doesn't save the other ones so um, if I didn't reply to you or I didn't read the message, I'm not ignoring you. I just want you guys to know that. I just want to throw that out there. I guess it deletes after 10. That's really stupid, but couldn't help it. So let's go ahead and hop into the video before I bore the crap out of you because I'm sure you guys are already knocked out just sleeping. So let's go ahead, hop into the video. So um, where should we start? I did something a little bit different. I laid out pretty much like one of each top water. I do have, um, I mean, some just a couple different colors. I have boxes back here full of top water, but um, let's go ahead and start off with the gunfish. Um, if you guys haven't thrown the gunfish right there, um, this is a little natural color. This is white on the bottom. I mean, so much with the top and the sides doesn't matter too much. It's mostly what's on the bottom, guys, because that's what the fish are looking at. It's got that little gunfish signature to make sure the fish can read um, what type of bait it is. Um, when the fish comes up and it's about to hit the bait, it's got to read that it's a gunfish. Um, like, I, I like pizza, and Johnny over here might like a cheeseburger. So, like, he'll come up and he'll read that that says gunfish, and he might turn away, you know. Um, but if he really likes gunfishes, he's going to whack the crap out of I'm totally kidding, guys. If you guys got zoned into that. Um, but what is a gunfish? It pretty much has, like, the popper style, chug bugish style um, lip to it, so it's going to be popping a little bit of water, but it's a bigger profile because if I take a popper right here, popper's pretty small. As you can tell, they have about the same style head um, or lip to it, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, it's a bigger profile. You can sling it out there way further. You can work it faster. Um, you can work it faster and it's going to stay in motion. The popper, if you try to work it too fast, it's going to kind of flop around too much. So that's what I really like about this. It's kind of like a popper and a spook built in the one. So it's a really great bait. Um, when that water is calm, it's a little bit of waves, um, not too like crazy windy and stuff. Really great bait to throw. Um, let's hop into the Sammy. Um, Sammy is pretty much like a spook. So this has more of a foreign body spook, just like a freaking piece of plastic. I don't, I don't understand. Um, fish love it though. Um, but this one's a little bit different. It's a little rounded. Um, it's as you can tell, it's kind of curved a little bit, so it's going to walk a little bit easier. Um, I really like this bait for the fact that I can get it out there. It's not like a popper where it's too small, but it's not super big like a spook. So if you're wanting like a little smaller bait, I would definitely go with um, a Sammy. And the only thing about these guys, all these baits I'm showing you, is these are some pretty expensive baits. Um, it hurts to throw a freaking $15 to $25 dollar 
lure out a fish knowing that some striper could come up and break you off. Drives me crazy. Um, next one is a repo man. Similar to a spook. Um, it's got some good rattling action to it. I really like a repo man. Um, not too much of a difference between this and the spook. Um, spook's obviously got a bigger profile. If I throw it up to a spook. About to say, I didn't even get one out. Um, spook has a bigger profile. Head shaped a little bit different. So this would um, coast across the water a little bit easier. Um, I mean, Spook is just straight up, straightforward playing bait. Here's the bigger style. Um, this is the smaller one. There's a bigger one right there. Just depending on um, how fast you're going to work it, how far you're wanting to get it out there. I personally like, I mean, there is going to be times where I'm going to fish the smaller one. But if I could... If it really wouldn't matter and I could just pick one, I would definitely pick the bigger one just because I can get that bait out there. Say I'm fishing brush on Lanier. I mean, I'm really needing to get that bait off. I don't want to pull up on the brush and just be throwing 15 foot in front of me. I want to be able to launch that bait. And most of the time, you're going to be on braided line. Um, that's what I do. So you can really get that bait out there anyways. Here's another one of the Sammies, except that one's in chrome. And let's go ahead and talk about the colors um, when I would use the colors and why it really varies. Um, for the most part, I only use three colors. Chrome, white, chrome, white, and more of a clearish color, like this. You can kind of see through it. Um, we have other ones that are, you can actually see through it. It's perfectly clear. Um, in the sun, I like to use the chrome color and reflects into the water, fish can see it better. When it's cloudy, a little bit overcast, I like to use the white one, the, or the bone colors like this. Um, it's really great and like cloudy, stuff like that. And it all depends what the fish is wanting that day as well. It doesn't always depend on the conditions like that, but also on what the fish are wanting. For an example, I go out there and I fish a mega bass jerkbait a lot on linear. I love throwing that jerkbait. Um, one day to be killing that white in the sun. Imagine that. Um, you just remember that I said the chrome in the sun. That's that's a good key. Um, but I may be throwing that white in the sun and that natural chromish color in the clouds. It just, it just all depends what the fish are really keen on, what the fish are wanting. But um, just a little quick tip. I like to throw chrome in the sun, uh, more bone color in the clouds. That's just what I like to do. Um, definitely go try it out. It's a good tip. So say you go out there one morning, that sun's just hitting that water really good. Um, try you a chrome colored topwater bait and um, let me know how it is guys. Um, let me know if that tip really helps next time you go out on the water. Here's a little river to see popper. And the thing, the thing that I like, or popar, however you guys want to say it. Popper, popar, popar, however you want to say it. Here's just a white popper. Um, what I really like about this river to see one is it has a bigger profile as compared to, this is a river to see one as well, um, but most style poppers are gonna be around this size, pretty dang small, um, probably about an inch, inch and a half. Um, this one is gonna have a little bit more weight. It's gonna be a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter profile. So you're gonna be able to launch that bait out there. Um, that's the biggest key in my opinion is get in the bait where you need it to be. Um, so that's why I like a little bigger style topwater bait. Here's the spook. Um, and he, woo! Sharp hooks right there, boys. Here's a spook. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar. If any of you guys topwater fish, you know what a spook is. Um, if you don't, go look it up. You can probably find tons of videos on it. Um, I have a linear video where we're throwing a spook and we're just killing those spots. I'm telling you guys, when you're fishing on linear for those spotted bass, those spotted bass are very aggressive. They'll launch this thing five foot out of the water. They're, they'll come up five foot from the boat and just boosh. They'll come in wolf packs like five fish is insane. Um, so I have a couple of videos on that if you want to go check that out. But what I really like and what I'm sure you guys like about the spook is it's straightforward. It's pretty simple bait. But it's really, really cost efficient. It's only like $6.00. Seven dollars. I mean, they're pretty cheap. You can get spooks fairly cheap. You can get them at Walmart. Um, 
I know all of us don't like spending $25 on a bait. I know all of us do don't like that. So, um, Spook's pretty cheap. You can pretty much get them anywhere. You can get them at your local tackle shops. You can get them at Bass Pro Shops. You can get them at Walmart. I mean, it's simple to find. That's what I really like about Spook. Um, when I throw a Spook, I like throwing a Spook when you can throw it when the water's crisp. You can throw it when the waves are going crazy. You can throw it, if you guys fish in here, you guys know what I'm about to talk about. Um, you go out there on a Saturday, the wind's crazy, the freaking boats, the big um, weekend warriors are out there. Um, so the waves are crazy. You can throw a spook in that as well. Spook just goes through really well in most of that stuff, and you can usually get good bites. Um, I was actually throwing this a couple days ago. Um, went out on Lanier for just a little bit of time because, I mean, there's so much week weekend people out. So it was bad. It was just a bad day to go. You don't want to go on a weekend on Lanier. Um, but I had about a five-pound spot, five-and-a-half-pound spot just come up and just miss this thing, but I mean, he was coming for it. He just didn't want to grab it. I don't understand. If he was in a wolf pack, they would have got it. Um, but that's what I really like about Spook. You can throw it pretty much in any conditions. Um, and it's also a pretty big style bait, pretty decently heavy style bait. So you can whip that thing out there. I mean, you can cast this thing at miles and it's intense. Um, here's another repo man, except that one's in the bone color. I showed you guys that. Here's a bit I haven't gone over. A chug bug. Um, a chug bug is pretty much similar to a popper. And honestly, if I could go, I honestly don't even throw poppers much. If I could compare this to a popper, or if I could throw one of them, I would definitely be throwing this one. Um, I really like it. It works um, really good. And I, and I mostly throw it on a spinning rod. Spinning rod with braid is what I throw these on. Um, because you can get the bait out there. They are light baits, like I said. Poppers are really light. Chug bug's pretty light. Chug bug's a little bit heavier than a popper. Um, but I would throw this on like a spinning combo um, with some braid. Works pretty good. Um, on Lanier, a little quick story. I was actually throwing this over some brush. Um, same exact one. I have one that's like really wore down. I believe I still have the same one. Um, I was throwing it over some brush. We're pre-fishing for um, state championship. And just working this papar. Right when I'm going over the brush because I have lineups in my head. Um, so I knew I was about to go over it, um, working the popper, and then boosh, just see them start, I, I could see there's multiple fish, but I was like, man, this is a big one, this is a big one, this is a big one, um, got it close to the boat, I could see it for a second, I had a spot on and a largemouth on, I had about a five pound spot on, and then I had about a six and a half pound, six pound largemouth on at the same time, so I had like 12 pounds on my line at once on this little bait right here and they each had an individual hook i guess the spot was hooked on this back one which is a little bit weaker and then a large mouth was hooked on this one but what happened was that when i when i got it up to the boat that spot just tore off it broke the o-ring and everything but i did get the large mouth and it was a pretty big fish just a little quick story um pretty crazy there's a bigger style one and so if you really wanted to get it out there you can throw this one on a bait caster um this one's way bigger if you compare it and the weight difference is freaking crazy you can tell it's pretty freaking big difference you get it out there I honestly like the smaller one in that one um, here's a little different bait and this is one of those prop baits um, this is a Rofflet one pretty sick looking bait I usually like the fatter prop baits like this one right here this one's actually a cedar lure this one's Stanford lures um, one of my old, old, old sponsors, but they actually went out of business. But um, really great bait, to be honest. I caught a lot of fish on it. These are really great when you're fishing like up shallow, when you're fishing over those beds, really good um, in the spring time, spring time, spring time and stuff. Um, also, when you fish by that grass, you can fish the edge of the grass with this. Catch some pretty good fish as well. Um, prop bait. Pretty much just throw it out there, um, and just you can. It's hard to explain. Just pretty much pull. You're just pulling towards you. Pull, pause. Pull, pause. So those props are just going. Those fish usually tear it up. But I usually like one that's sized like this. I might don't throw too many of the ones like this. That kind of looks like a jerk bait. Um, more of the ones like this. A little fatter styles. Right here. Um, this one's called the Ghost Walker. This one's by Sibyl. I actually threw this a couple times and this one walked phenomenal. I know you guys are probably thinking, man, that's kind of shaped a little weird. But honestly, this bait walked amazing. Um, I threw. I kind of want to get a bigger one. 
Um, I mean, it's still it's still pretty good size. A little a little smaller than the Spook. But honestly, this thing was walking amazing. I, I was surprised when I threw it out there. I didn't think it was going to walk as well. Um, I know I threw Sibyl's swim baits and stuff a lot, and I really liked them. But I didn't think I, – I was surprised when I threw that out there. I caught some good fish on it as well. Look at that big mama. What is this? You got – I bet – 50% of my viewers right now do not know what in the world this is. Um, this is called a front runner. You guys are probably thinking, what in the heck is that? It's about, about the size of my eye. About the size of my eye. Um, got a feather hook and everything. Um, what you do with this is when you... Alright, I'm going to go with an example right here. We're on Lanier, and those spots go in wolf packs like I said. And they'll be trying. They'll be honestly trying to steal the bait out of the other fish's mouth. You'll have like five, five pound spots chasing your bait, and you only have one hooked, and you're just thinking to yourself, "Come on, I want three. Like it's just crazy. They're going crazy over the bait. What this does is you'll tie this directly to your line, and then you'll have a leader. You can make that leader as long as you want. Um, honestly, I would say about that much, about a foot, foot and a half leader. Um, I mean, you're going to obviously need to cast it so you don't want it too long. Um, but what it's going to look like is you're, you're going to work your bait the same as you would. And what it's going to look like, it's going to look like this bait, this bait fish right here, is chasing something else. And it will set those fish off. I guarantee you guys, you need to go try it. It will set those fish off. And it's just a little hook on here, but it will catch fish. Um, it sets those fish off, and when they're going in those wolf packs, you will sometimes hook two, maybe even three fish. Um, it's pretty good, really good on the near with his aggressive spots. But I'm sure if this large mouth bass that most of you guys are fishing for, will whack it as well. Especially this small mouth, really aggressive fish. Um, here's another style of bait, and this is a custom painted bait. This is a wake bait. Um, this is a Buckeye Leader's wake bait. I really like a wake bait, guys. But when to throw a wake bait is the biggest key. You're not going to want to go out there when the winds are 15 miles an hour and throw a wake bait. Or the waves are just crazy. It's, it, it won't work. You literally have to run this thing so slow that I like throwing it on a 5 to 1 gear ratio reel just like a crankbait. Um, what it does is it coasts at the top of the water like this. And it's such a smooth motion. It's literally like I'm running it right here. Except it's kind of dig, it's dig exactly like that. Fishy, fishy, fishy. Uh, I get off topic. Um, you have to run this thing really slow. So I like a 5 to 1 gear ratio reel. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it just has to happen. Um, really good throwing it in the morning, but the water has to be crisp. Literally, it, it the wind can't be blowing a bit. I mean, if it blows like a tad, and there's a little bit of current, a little bit of ripple, you can still work it. But most of the time when the water's just slick, wake bait's the thing to go, man. They will crush this thing. They hate it for some reason. I don't know why. They just tear it up. Um, also, when they're bedding, really great bait. Throw it at the bank, work it back to you. Really good. Caught some good fish, actually, um, bed fishing this year. Right Here's another wake bait. Big old honker donker right there. Um, this is more of a striper bait, but you can catch bass on it as well. Um, I personally just like this one. Personal favorite. Um, and that's pretty much all. Actually, I want to show you this one over here. Here's another um, prop bait. It's called a buzz jet, and it has a lip, so it's going to dig down a little bit more. You can work it a little bit faster. Um, it just has one of those props on the back. Really cool bait as well, thicker bait. Like I said, I like the thicker ones on better. A lot of rattles in it. Um, but pretty much, guys, that's all the topwater baits, topwater styles that I throw. Um, like a Sammy, Repo Man, Gunfish, Spook, Popar, um, Chug Bug. That's pretty much all the styles that I throw. Wake bait as well, prop bait, stuff like that. Um, everything I went through. Um, so there's all times to fish those, like I went over. Um, the wake bait you want to throw when the water's crisp. Spook you can throw pretty much any time, especially when the water's really choppy. Um, it's really great to throw that. Gunfish when the water's kind of moderate. Um, so they're just like tools, guys. You're not going to use a flathead for a Phillips head. You know, you, you, they're, they're tools and depending on what the fish are wanting that day or depending how the conditions are you're gonna have to throw it one or another so let's go ahead and hop into the rod and reel setup on the line i use um rod pretty much any um medium power rod can work 
Um, medium heavy can work. Even a heavy could work. I want to be too specific on it. Um, I like a lighter rod just so I can work it a little bit better. Um, like a jerkbait rod, we have a jerkbait rod that I throw top water on because it just works for me. Um, it's a little lighter rod. Um, this is pretty pretty heavier style rod that I have on this, but um, that's what I had braided on that time, so just tying this on. Um, and the reel I have it on, this is a Legend Extreme um, rod by St. Croix, by the way. Really great rod, you guys know that's my favorite rod, um, just the handle and everything, it feels so great. Um, the reel is a Revo SX, and I know you guys are going to love me saying this because it's really um, great priced for you guys that are wanting a little cheaper style reel. Um, it's around 100 140 150 bucks um so it's going to be a really great reel that's going to last you a while this is one of the first generation revo um sx so it shows how long we've had it um really great style reel and the line i have is 65 pound braid by spider wire um really um really low on the price for the spider wire you don't have to pay that much for it um just last pretty good last a long time so I'm not complaining um and right here i just have a spook on I mean, I just like throwing a spook. It's just simple as it gets. You can throw it any time. Um, and as you guys can tell, I have red hooks on there. And you guys are probably thinking, why do you have red hooks? That's another thing that I can talk about. And why do I have the feather? It's something for them to zone on for the most part, guys. Um, they see that red. It's a little bit different. I usually don't put a red one in the front. I usually just put one in the back. But um, see, if they hit it from the back, they're going to get the whole bait. If they hit it from the front, they might just get the front hook because they're gonna hit your line. You want them to hit it from the back. So I'll put a red red hook on the back. It will attract, not really attract the fish, but they'll zone in on it more when they're going towards that bait. They'll zone in on that, so they'll hit the back of it. Um, just a little quick tip there. So I hope you guys really got some good information from this video. I know I talked a lot, but I already knew this video was gonna um, take a while to go through. But I just gave you some good tips. Um, what baits to throw, when to throw them, when the conditions are rough, when to throw which bait. I mean, that that's... It's just the tools that you guys got to have, guys. So go check you out some of these baits if you haven't already. Um, a spook is a good one to start off with. If you guys aren't used to throwing top water, a little chug bug. Chug bug and spook, I mean, cheap as they get, man. You can just go pick one up pretty cheap, $6. You can get them both at Walmart, um, anything like that. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below on what you guys want to see next week. And um, leave a comment below if this helped you out. Also, um, Definitely check out St. Croix Rods, Ava Garcia Reels, really great setup. And you guys have been asking me what's my favorite setup. Um, and it'd be any Revo style reel on um, pretty much any St. Croix Rod. And why I say any is because all you guys are at different price ranges. I can't really specify one to you guys. Um, but if I could choose one, it'd be a Revo MGX on a Legend Extreme St. Croix Rod. That's just my favorite personally. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please check out the Pond Vlogs. Um, I vlog four days in a row. So, and I posted a video like the past nine days. So you guys definitely need to go check out all those videos if you haven't already. Um, yesterday, I did post a Gunnersville tournament video with LA. Um, please go check that out. It's a little motivational video. It really means a lot if you guys go check that out. Also, check out the vlogs. I'll leave the links at the end of this video. You follow vlogs. You'll get to see Chris's schmedleys. You'll get to wash my dad's peekers. Stomach cramping all up. But until next time, guys. Keep drinking them wine monsters. Keep smelling yourself, boys and girls. See you guys next time.